Hey everybody, and welcome to our next lecture on direct current DC circuit analysis. And today we are going to look at a parallel circuit. One of the ideas around this parallel circuit is that each resistor in parallel will drop the same voltage. And now there's a difference from a series where they would drop different voltages. Here in parallel they drop the same voltage. However, unlike series where they get the same current in each resistor, each resistor in a parallel circuit gets a different current. So series, same current, different voltage. Parallel, same voltage, different current. So this is what a parallel circuit would look like. Now this is definitely more complicated because we have our voltage source and we have our resistors that are hooked up to the circuit like this. Now what's interesting is what happens with current. You see current leaves here. I'm going to call that current I1. And it moves along and it reaches what I like to call a junction. Okay. Now if you think about it like water pipes. If water is coming from one pipe and there are two different pipes, water, or current in this case, is going to split up and some's going to go one way and some's going to go the other. In other words, there's going to be a current I2 here and a current I3 there. Now, if we just focus on I3 for a moment, it reaches a junction right here and must split again into I4 and I5. Now, I5 runs through resistor 3 here, keeps coming around, and at this junction, it meets up with I4 again. Now, we've got a conserved charge, right? So if I3 split into 4 and 5, when 4 and 5 come back together, it has to be that same I3 again. It then runs into this junction where it meets up with I2 and must become I1 again. So we've conserved charge still. The current I1 that we left with is still the current that we return with, even though it's divided up along the way. But how are we going to deal with this circuit? Well, we have to deal with this by once again converting it into this simple circuit. Okay, where we have a single voltage, a single current that I'll call I1, and this REQ, the equivalent resistance. Now, here's the trickier part. Remember in series, in series to get REQ, we just had to add the resistors together. And in a way that made sense because the more resistors in series, in a way the longer the resistance became. And resistance and length are directly proportional. So that's why I could sort of add things together. But here, by putting resistors in parallel, I'm creating more and more pathways for the current to travel. In a way, it's like making it a wider path. In other words, increasing area. Now, resistance and area are inversely proportional. And that leads to how we get the REQ of a parallel circuit, that inversely proportional idea. To start off, I invert my REQ. And 1 over REQ will equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, or however many resistors there are. Now, what does that really mean? Let's take this circuit down here. I have a 54 volt source, and it's attached to three resistors in parallel, a 9 ohm, a 6 ohm, and an 18 ohm. And again, what I want to do is to reduce it to this simple circuit that will still have 54 volts. Now, to get REQ, well, for parallel, I do this 1 over REQ, which is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Okay, so that would be 1 over 9 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 18. Now, we've got to do everybody's fun thing, get a common denominator here, which would be 18. So that 1 ninth is 2 eighteenths, 1 sixth is 3 eighteenths, and 1 eighteenth. So that gives me 6 over 18, or 1 over 3. But now notice, 1 over REQ equals 1 over 3. So I have to flip everything around, and that gives me an REQ of 3 ohms when I flip over both those fractions. Or you can just look at the bottom there. So the REQ of this circuit is a 3 ohm resistor. Now notice that 3 ohms is less than any one of those other resistors. So it turns out by adding resistors in parallel, you reduce the resistance of your circuit. Unlike series, where adding resistors in series increases the resistance of your circuit. Let's 
apply Ohm's law to this. V equals IR. 54 volts and 3 ohms of resistance must mean 18 amps. Wow, that's a really big current. And that's the thing about parallel. As you add resistors in parallel, your resistance goes down and your current goes up. Now remember that if this circuit here represents this one, and this circuit uses 18 amps, then 18 amps comes out of here. Now that 18 amps comes along and hits this junction. Some current's going to go this way and some's going to go this way. Well, how do we know what goes where? Well, that's where we apply the other parallel rule. Now this is probably the most confusing rule for people. Everybody's okay with the series one, okay, where you can sort of divide up the voltage along the way. If I were to cut off any one resistor, it wouldn't cut off the rest of the circuit. There would still be complete pathways. So what that means is that it's like each resistor is plugged into its own individual 54 volt source. So here's the tricky part, folks. Each one of these is plugged into that 54 volt source. So each one will drop 54 volts. They all share that 54 volts. Now, I know that's hard to imagine, but imagine a power strip. Okay? Now, when you plug something into the wall, it gets, say, about 120 volts, whatever you plug into. But when you plug in a power strip, it gives you all these plugs. In each one, better be able to provide 120 volts. And that's because a power strip is hooked up in parallel. So they can all get that same push. Now, remember, the voltage is the push. So they all get the same push, but they're resisting differently, so they'll get different currents. So again, with the idea of Ohm's law, in that 9 ohm resistor, 54 volts divided by 9 ohms gives me 6 amps. Now, if 18 amps came here and 6 went that way, that leaves 12 amps left to go down to here that reaches this junction. Well, my next resistor, 54 volts divided by 6 ohms, means that 9 amps is going this way. Well, if 12 amps hit that junction and 9 went one way, that leaves 3 amps left. But if we look here, 54 volts divided by 18, well, that is 3 amps. So it all works out. And in fact, that 9 and 3 would come back together and make 12 here. That 12 would join up with that 6 coming down, and we'd have 18 amps going right back in. So parallel is definitely a little trickier than it is in series. Now let's take a look at that again in the simulation. Okay, here we've got my parallel circuit. Okay. Uh, apparently the current's a little high, but that's okay. Have a 54 volt source, 9 ohm resistance, 6 ohm resistance, and 18 ohm resistance. Now you'll notice we have our 18 amps that leaves and comes back. Here on the 9 ohm we have 6 amps. On the 6 ohm, we have 9 amps, and on the 18 ohm, we have 3 amps. Notice, the higher the resistance, the less current it actually gets. Now, let's look at those voltage drops. Put my voltmeter across the 9 ohm, and it says, dropping 54 volts. I put it across the next one. Oh, also drops 54 volts. Put it across the last one, and it also drops 54 volts. And again, that's because parallel, it's almost like they're their own circuits all acting together, but they each need electricity. So putting more and more in there draws more and more current from the voltage source. So if I cut off one of the resistors, in fact, I'll cut off the one in the middle. Now notice, by cutting off that middle resistor, I cut the pathway here, but that didn't dis disconnect the circuit. Okay? The circuit still continues to run. Now notice that I lowered the overall current that is now passing through the whole circuit because I disconnected one of the things that needed current. But my voltage drop still remains 54 volts across the resistor here and still remains 54 volts across the resistor over here. Okay, So it's still working out to be the same way. And again, if I were to cut off one more resistor, 
the total resistance of the circuit went up, because now it's only an 18 ohm resistor, and now the total current goes down. But again, the voltage drop still remains the same. So that's the key to parallel. They all drop the same voltage when they're in parallel. They just get different currents. Okay, so let's try an example problem. Here I have a 32 volt source attached to three resistors in series, an 8 ohm, a 4 ohm, and an 8 ohm. I want to know the REQ of the circuit, all the four indicated currents, I1, 2, 3, and 4 shown there, the voltage drop on each resistor, and what is the total power used by the circuit. Okay, so first, let's draw our simple circuit. It's always important to actually draw that simple circuit so you know what you're doing. 32 volts. All right, 1 over REQ, plus 1 over 8, plus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 8, there's some common denominators, that's 1 over 8 plus 2 over 8 plus 1 over 8, which is 4 eighths, or 1 half. So that means that REQ itself will be 2 ohms. So there is a 2 ohm resistor in this simple circuit. Now, using Ohm's law, 32 volts and 2 ohms gives a current of 16 amps. Now, here's the tricky part. Again, this simple circuit represents the parallel group. 16 amps leaves the voltage source, so 16 amps is only I1. Okay, Only I1 is 16 amps. Now, I don't know what the rest of the currents are yet, but I do know what the voltage drops are. Because it's parallel, they each drop 32 volts. That's the voltage drop on each one. The 8 ohm drops 32 volts, the 4 ohm drops 32 volts, and the other 8 ohm drops 32 volts. I've answered all those questions. And now having answered that, I can answer my other current questions. So I2, well, Ohm's law, V equals IR, right? 32 volts and 8 ohms must mean 4 amps is dropped here. 32 volts and 4 ohms must mean 8 amps is at I3. And 32 volts and 8 ohms must mean 4 amps here. So I2 is 4 amps. I3 was 8 amps. And I4 was 4 amps. And notice we can check that. Because if I add 4 plus 8 plus 4, I get the 16 amps that I started with and I have to end with. Conservation of charge. Now, total power. Well, if I ever want total, I come down to the simple circuit. Okay, the simple circuit is where my total is found. And on my simple circuit, if I do P equals IV, I have 16 amps of current and 32 volts, which means this circuit uses 512 watts of power. And that's basically the idea of a parallel circuit. Again, a little trickier than a series circuit. So keep in mind that a series circuit, to get the REQ, you add up the resistors. More resistors in series, more resistance, but less current. In parallel, we have that 1 over REQ relationship. More resistors in parallel, we get a lower resistance and a lot more current. In series, same current, different voltage drops. In parallel, same voltage drops, different currents. All right, we'll see you next time.